Hi, I'm Matt from ArcGSB, and welcome to our video series on data mapping, where I cover all of the features of the XML map connector. This is the sixth video of the series, and I'll be talking about how you can add custom scripting logic to your mapping. This is the most advanced video in the series, and we strongly recommend checking out the previous videos if you haven't already. First, let's take a moment to talk broadly about scripting in ArcGSB. Arc includes its own scripting language, called ArcScript, which is based on XML, so it might look a bit unusual in comparison to other scripting languages. This video will be most helpful if you already have a basic grasp of ArcScript, so if you're looking for a resource to get started with ArcScript, then please feel free to check out our ArcScript Quick Start in the knowledge base at arcgsb.com. There are two ways to write script in the XML map connector. The difference between the two is whether the script should immediately return output, or simply store a variable for later. The custom script option for any output node allows you to write a custom script that returns a value for the node. In contrast, a script node allows you to write a custom script without returning any output. I'll run through an example of each, starting with the script that does return output. So you might be familiar with a select case statement as a general programming concept, sometimes also called a switch, like this .NET example. This can come up during a mapping, like the following example. Let's say that I'm mapping the item ID for some line items, but the ID is given as a code, and I want to substitute in the plain item name for that code. Well, I know ahead of time the list of possible codes and what item name they correspond to, so I just need to add a select case statement to map the correct name based on the item code. Let's see what that would look like in ArcScript. First, here in the XML map designer, I'll click on this XML tag icon to bring up the custom script editor. And now it's time to do some scripting by hand, so feel free to pause the video to take in what's going on here. So first I want an arc set statement that sets an attribute or a variable, and in this case I want to set the item ID value. Well to find the item ID value, I want to use the xpath function, which takes as a parameter the path to the item ID in the input file. This is the same kind of xpath that would show up in the XML map visual designer if you were doing the drag and drop mapping approach. So now I want to add a select statement, and I want the select statement to reference the variable I just defined, the item ID. So I'll set the value for this select statement to this variable. All right, now inside of my select, I want to add a case statement for each of the possible codes. So let's say the first code is just A5. And then let's say that A5 is the item code for a spoon. So inside this case statement, I'll set a variable, which I'll eventually return, to the string spoon. Then I can close this case statement and add another one for the next possible code. And let's say for simplicity, it's A6. Well, inside this case, I'll do the same thing. I'll set the variable that I'm gonna use for output to the appropriate item name. And let's say the A6 is the item code for a fork. Then I'll close this case statement. And of course, I could keep adding more cases here, but for right now, let's add a default case in case we don't recognize the item code. And then in my default, I might want to throw an error because we just received a code that we didn't recognize. That seems like a reasonable time to throw an error in this script. And now I want to make sure to provide a relevant error description to this error that I'm throwing so that it's clear what happened. All right, with my throw, I can now close the default and now I'll go ahead and close the select. And now the last thing to do is actually return as output the variable that I've set within these case statements. So either fork or spoon. And this result.txt variable is what actually gets returned from the script. So I'll make sure to set result.txt to my variable like this. All right, so with this script, the mapping will convert the item codes to the appropriate item name automatically. Let's move on to script nodes, which again are different from this custom script we just worked with because they don't return anything or show up at all in the output XML. So typically the point of a script node is to calculate and save a value that you want to reference later in the mapping. It's important to take a second here and talk about the underscore map object. This is a special arc script object, or sometimes called item, that behaves like any other item, except that it persists throughout the whole mapping. So if I set an attribute of underscore map in the first node of my mapping, I can still reference that same attribute in the last node of my mapping, and it'll have the same value. Okay, so now let's take a look at an example that uses script nodes and the underscore map object. So in this example outbound EDI invoice, I have these IT1 loop1 structures, and they each represent a line item in my invoice. 
Then I also have this CTT segment here at the bottom of the document, and that needs to contain the total number of line items in the invoice. I'll need a for each relationship between my line item input data and the IT1 loop 1, because that represents a line item in my output. And then, of course, once I've mapped that for each, I'll map the individual elements here inside the loop. But the problem is, by the time I get down here to the CTT segment, I will have exited this for each loop, because CTT isn't a child of IT1 loop 1, it's a sibling. But now I need to count how many loops I performed to know how many line items I have. But I can't do that retroactively now that the loop is completed. So the trick here is I want to count the number of loops inside the for each loop, save that value, and then reference it later here in the CTT segment. So let's do that now. So I need a script to count the loops and store that value in the underscore map object. But I don't want that script to actually return any output yet. So I want to add a new script node here in the for each. Then I'll open up the script editor for this new node. And I'll start by setting an attribute of the underscore map object using a line like this. This will count the number of loops using the following logic. This def formatter says start this attribute at 0 if it doesn't exist yet. And then this add formatter says increment the value by 1. So when it doesn't yet exist, it'll get set to 1. And every successive loop, it'll be incremented by 1. So by the time the for each loop has finished, this script will have counted the number of times the loop executed and stored that value in underscore map dot line count. So I'll go ahead and save that, and then move down here to the CTT segment. And now I can reference the saved value by simply opening up the expression editor and putting in underscore map dot line count in square brackets like this. So now what I've done is I've counted the line items inside the for each loop without generating any output. Then I've returned that output later down here in the CTT segment. And that's it for this scripting video. Naturally, there are many more applications of custom scripting than the specific examples I've shown here, but hopefully this video helps provide you with the tools to implement your own custom logic within ArcGSB's XML Map Connector. Thanks for watching, and as always, you can find more resources and even a free trial of the application at ArcGSB.com.